as assistant manager of the Farm Science Review, one of the largest farm expositions in the world, Matthew Sullivan knows farm equipment. When we look at the history of, of agriculture here in the United States, we have to go back to when the settlers started going across the prairies. When they started heading into Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, the farmers saw a tremendous potential and they needed to break the prairies up and start farming. They started out with a wooden plow and a horse. And then as equipment started to progress, John Deere made the steel plow. Then throughout the years, they started out with steam engines and essentially an old style bulldozer. They would pull a plow that was 10 foot wide. That stayed that way pretty much until, I would say, about the 1930s and 40s. And then the revolution of agriculture started to take place. And so you started to see tractors that had um, 100 horsepower. Now, if we fast forward to where we are today, the tractors have horsepowers to four to 500 horsepower versus just 40 years ago, we were at 100 horsepower. So we went from two-wheel drive essentially to six-wheel drive. So agriculture has truly uh, made gigantic leaps with the ability to build bigger, faster, more efficient tractors and combines and sprayers. Agriculture is just uh, really going to the new level. It's almost like space age. We are essentially space age farmers now with GPS. Inside the tractor, the sprayer, there's actually a computer screen. It, it's like having a laptop inside your tractor, only you don't have the keyboard. And so all the, the screens inside the tractor that they use for the prescription maps are touch screens. So as a farmer drives across the field, he can actually watch where he's going. And essentially, he wouldn't even have to see in the field where he's at because he could be looking at the screen all the time. Now, we don't want the farmers to do that, what we really want them to do is be the manager and make sure that the equipment is working properly. So the, the days of using paper in a tractor cab to determine where you're at are technology of 20 years ago. Nowadays, farmers can have aerial photographs or regular maps of their fields turned into prescription maps, which can then be plugged into a machine's GPS system. And that's where the, a map of the field is delineated maybe by soil type or by the amount of weeds that are located in a field. And you can put that on a map in your sprayer to put on different amounts of fertilizer or chemical. And as the farmer drives across the field, the GPS knows its location, the exact location. And once it reaches that area or polygon, the sprayer, the fertilizer applicator will actually change the rate as it goes through the field and it'll do it pretty quick. Within five to 10 seconds, it might go from 20 gallon to an acre to 30 gallon. So the farmer sits there and watch it happens. It's like he's being a manager again and not having to flip a switch and have to do it manually. The idea behind precision agriculture is that better, more scientific farm management means a better return from every acre. I think it gives you a better opportunity to actually see what the variability is in your soil or the variability is in your crop. You can take GPS with you when you go scout and you can see where your problems are and then take it back and put it on a map and then you can use your yield maps, you can use your scouting maps to get a better picture of what's actually going on in your farm. 20 years ago, we didn't have that ability. We'd say, oh, wonder what happened out there. And maybe it was a wet spot, or maybe we had insects, we don't know. But now, we have a greater ability to really know what happened so that we can make that correction for the next year. I would say from a standpoint of efficiency, it has increased our operation by at least 10 to 15%. And to put a, a dollar amount, I would say from five to ten dollars an acre, it has helped us because we're able to work longer hours in a day. We're able to be more efficient. And what that enables us to do is that if everything else falls in place the way it should, you may gain four, five, six bushel per acre. And that's a lot when we're talking about the, the commodity prices of today. One of the things about precision agriculture is that it reduces the guesswork. And agriculture is all about variability. Anybody that's done it 
knows that. Is it going to rain here or is it going to rain at my neighbor's farm? So it's, everything's variable. The biggest thing that we try to do is reduce that variability. And if we can reduce one variable at a time, we've succeeded. We've done something right. Precision can be a pricey matter, though. The money that we've got invested in this machinery is equal to the price of a tractor or even a combine in some cases, depending on how far you want to go with it. It's, it is a big investment. And can I tell you how many dollars it's returned to us on our investment? No, I can't. Now, having said that, I see our production getting better every year and our yields are increasing every year. And uh, I can't help but think that that's got something to do with it. Precision agriculture helps farmers deal not only with financial pressures, but social responsibilities as well. Land costs are increasing, cash rents are increasing, and so the farmer has to be a very good manager, not only of his finances, but of the land and what he's putting on the land. And not only does he have to watch it from a standpoint of how much inputs are costing him, farmers are environmental stewards. And we enjoy fishing, we enjoy going boating, just like everybody else does. And so we want to protect those streams. We want to protect those waterways. So we want to enjoy the environment just like everybody else does. So if we use the inputs correctly, not only will it benefit us in agriculture, but it'll benefit us when we want to go play as well. So there's, there's a lot of benefits to using precision agriculture that are outside just putting some fertilizer in the field.